Check. There we go. Check. Good? Check. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nav Brar. I'm your PC candidate for Burroughs, and we're more alike than you may think. I'm the son of immigrants. I'm a university graduate. I work as a home builder, and I, too, am looking to buy my first home. Young people, like me, are finding it increasingly difficult to buy a house. It's not just the down payment we need to save, but the other associated costs, like legal, legal fees and taxes. The NDP Liberal Coalition housing policies have been disastrous. While Manitoba is still more affordable than places like Toronto and Vancouver, our PC team is fighting to help first time home buyers get into the housing market. To make today's exciting announcement, please welcome PC candidate for Riel, Rochelle Squires. Thank you very much for that wonderful introduction and thanks to all of you for joining me here in my wonderful constituency of Riel. And I'm thrilled to be talking to you today about how we are fighting for first time home buyers. We have seen across this country how it's getting harder and harder for young people and newcomers to buy their first homes. Too many Manitobans are struggling to make ends meet. Our children are facing a much different housing landscape than we were years ago. Progressive Conservatives are focused on making life more affordable and making Manitoba a more attractive place to live. While NDP parties across Canada are trying to tax you more, our PC team is fighting to keep your costs down. In Manitoba, it was an NDP government that created the land transfer tax which is among the highest in Canada. It was also the NDP that expanded the PST to legal fees, adding even more costs to buying a home. These are more barriers to Manitobans looking to buy their first home. Our PC team eliminated the Selinger Canoe PST on home buying legal fees in our first term in office. And today we are going further. Today, I'm excited to announce that a re-elected PC government will remove the land transfer tax for first-time home buyers, saving the average first-time home buyer $5,700. That is money people and newcomers can invest in their homes or add to their down payment. This will make the home buying process more accessible to Manitobans looking to get their slice of the Canadian dream. This is another part of our PC team's vision to grow our province and help young people, newcomers, and Manitobans looking to put down roots in our province. We're the only party fighting for real, permanent affordability measures. We have a strong vision to grow our economy so that we can lower taxes and help make you make ends meet. I'm proud to be part of this incredible team of progressive conservatives fighting for a better Manitoba. Thank you for being here today. Thank, thank you, Rochelle. I'd like to now open up to the media for some questions. If you could please go one at a time. When would it start? Thanks for that question, Bart. It's a high priority for a newly elected PC government, so we would get to work on that, and we would want to see implementation almost immediately after forming a government. And how much would this cost in reduced revenue over the course of a fiscal year? 
So we know that the land transfer tax brings in uh, roughly 130 to 140 million dollars a year and if we were to approximate that one in four new ho uh, homes being sold are going to those first time home buyers it would be about between 35 million and 40 million. That's a great question and that is that continues on the work that we've been doing um, particularly in this last year when we unveiled our homelessness strategy after a full uh, con consultation with people who were having lived experience with the homelessness or facing housing insecurity and working with groups that are advocating for more housing in the province of Manitoba. That is why we came out with our strategy earlier this year um, that was uh, costed at $126 million to ensure that we had 700 net new units of social and affordable housing and I'm very proud to say that as of mid-July we had the implementation was already beginning for all of those 700 new units to be created in this fiscal year and we will be consulting and consultation work is ongoing right now and will be addressed uh, when uh, the PC government if we're newly if we're re-elected to ensure that we set a new target for next year for how many social and affordable housing units we will be providing for next year but this year 700 net new units of social and affordable housing what we're also doing is we made enhanced investments that were in the budget 2023 that the NDP voted against to ensure that we had more repair and maintenance so that any social housing stock that was off the market because it needed to be repaired and maintained that we could quickly do a turnaround, get that unit back um, in, in, uh, on the market and get families moved in there as well as ensuring that we've got uh, more housing units. That's why our government signed on that to that national housing strategy, working with our federal government, as well as working with municipal gov governments to streamline the process, cut red tape, and ensure new homes come on the market as soon as possible. So we know that there were several units that were coming off of agreement. These were not social, uh, these were not publicly owned housing. These were uh, nonprofit housing providers. What our government did in July is we announced a, um, uh, a pot of money available for any housing um, cooperative or any housing um, initiative that was coming off of agreement. We know that we didn't want those housing units to go on the market and uh, so we offered funding to come into a relationship, come into agreement with the Manitoba government so that we would continue to subsidize those housing so that no uh, more housing units were lost. So they can apply to the government for funding. That was money that was put in last year's budget that is, has been annualized. So it's a part of a strategy. It's annualized funding that will be in the Department of Housing on an ongoing basis to ensure that as units are coming off of agreement, there's an opportunity for us to collaborate, to work together, and to ensure that social housing units are maintained and that more affordable and social housing units are created in the province. Unlike the former government who uh, saw the number of units dwindle under their term in government. So we know that it was uh, Howard Pauley's government that brought in the land transfer tax and that it was the Greg Selinger government that also brought in uh, taxes on the legal fees, that those were two major impediments to uh, home buyers, particularly first time home buyers. And so in our uh, first two mandates, we had focused on ensuring that there were affordability measures for Manitobans, but we know that it's become even harder for, for families to get into a home. If you look at the market, um, the cost of housing prices and uh, a variety of other factors we know that the time has come to ensure that we're looking at substantive relief and incentives for people to lay down roots in our province and we thought removing the land transfer tax for first-time home buyers was an excellent first step and have you done any and when you put this announcement together any analysis on how many 
more people do you think would be able to buy homes? Is there you, any estimations here? Well, I'm very pleased today to be joined by uh, many Manitobans who are standing behind me who are looking to get into the market are in that category of first time home buyers. And we know throughout this great province, there are a lot of people that are excited about the opportunity of home ownership. And we look forward to working with them and a newly re-elected re PC government will ensure that we uh, work with uh, newcomers, first time home buyers, to ensure that everybody has a place to call home in Manitoba. And while I mean, you address some of this or, or a related question with the, house, with the social housing question, while Manitoba isn't seeing the kinds of housing pressure that we have seen in Toronto, in Vancouver, there still is a shortage. What other means would your government do to increase the supply of exactly. housing, uh, especially for newcomers, especially for university students? We've seen issues in the Fort Gary area. Um, Fort, pointing in the wrong direction, that way. Uh, what, uh, what other things would you do? Supply is also a, a major uh, concern and that is something that our government would continue to work with, um, whether it be the federal government, uh, and I know that they've got initiatives out right now that are working on increasing supply in various jurisdictions. The Manitoba government has always been at the table working with the federal government, um, signing on to that national housing strategy and working to ensure that new supply, that Manitoba gets its uh, share of new supply, whether it be through the rapid housing initiatives we've come in and topped up after uh, those uh, commitments have been made. Uh, we also uh, gave $12 million to municipalities that were shut out of the rapid housing initiative and that was for them to look at housing opportunities and create new supply in their jurisdictions. And uh, further, we're working with all municipalities to streamline that process so permits can be obtained a little easier, that uh, d land uh, that is potentially available for development gets to market sooner than, uh, than, than ever before. And will there be something specific on this further in the campaign? So there's 27 more days in this campaign. I look forward to seeing you the next 27 days. Stay tuned. And on, at that social housing announcement at Thunderbird House, uh, there were various levels of government there. Uh, the city was involved. The city is, seems like they're spending a lot of effort with some success on the, on the homelessness side of the equation a little bit more, but also a little bit on housing. How, I know this is asking you to put your ministerial hat back on, but... How's that going with the city in trying to tackle that sort of multi-headed beast that is housing, homelessness, addictions, how is this working? So I can say that the relationship between the province and the city has never been better from my experience and we've been really uh, very uh, excited and uh, grateful to be working with a willing mayor, Scott Gillingham had made, um, working towards securing uh, shelter for the unsheltered and homes for everybody, that was part of his uh, campaign platform and true to his word he's been a, a very collaborative partner so I'm very appreciative of that and uh, the city is working with uh, with us as well as the federal government to ensure that um, there's a safe place to call home for all Manitobans. I would say that we're making very good progress. It also includes those wraparound housing supports because Mayor Gillingham and our government agree that there's a lot more to housing the most uh, vulnerable citizens in the province than just handing over a set of keys. So we've also built in some of those wraparound housing supports so that they can be successfully housed and that's, that's significant. Are we going to hear more about that in the campaign? There's 27 more days to go. But, but are we, will you commit to more on, 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 on homelessness initiatives and supports and addictions during this campaign? I think what you can see from the track record of this PC government is that securing shelter and making sure that everybody in the province has a safe and affordable place to call home was a key priority for our government. That is why we did the first of its kind whole of government strategy to um, ensure uh, that there was uh, housing and, and uh, uh, options for people who were unsheltered. That's why we moved the shelters, the, the four shelters in the city of Winnipeg and three outside of the city of Winnipeg to 24-7 access to be providing those social services supports. That is why we got built into the budget uh, funding so that we can have long-term progress on tackling that very complex problem of homelessness. So I can assure you that it will remain a commitment for the PC team and a newly uh, re-elected PC government. So why then does it seem like homelessness is getting worse? I mean, if your government committed to it and took action and came up with a strategy, why is it, I mean, does it just seem worse or are people, you know, it's 
more evident now? What, what do you think? Do you think this issue? It's a very complex issue and one that and one that required a very thoughtful, collaborative approach. And that is why we partnered with the federal government and the city. That is why we came out with the first of its kind homelessness strategy, a place for uh, for everyone that we unveiled earlier this year. That is why we've committed to the 700 net new units this fiscal year. And that is why those dollars are baked into the budget and the Department of Housing so that we can continue to grow uh, the opportunities and continue to see progress in this area. But homelessness is a very complex issue and it wasn't overnight that got us into this situation. It wasn't overnight that many of these factors came to bear that uh, resulted in folks unsheltered and therefore it's going to take a, um, a, a long commitment but I do want to just say a special thanks to everybody who's working in that sector we've hired more homelessness outreach mentors and provided more funding for the shelters so that they could have those outreach mentors so that people can get the services that they need when they need them the most that is why we're working with um, putting the shelters to 24 7 and working with other organizations like the Downtown Community Safety Partnership so that those relationships can be built and that those needs can be addressed and met. Stupid question, whose house is this? It is a, a constituent of Riel who happens to be moving and they have kindly allowed us to, um, to use their front yard as a, as a place to make the announcement. Are, are they here? Uh, they're not here at this moment, no. They have a young family and, and as you know, that it's a back to school day and... Uh, Remind me again, so who pays the land transfer tax? The purchaser or the seller? Uh, when you buy your home. Before so you the purchaser it. buys it. Always, mm -hmm. okay. I don't remember it, but it was 20 years ago. Yes. And it's uh, a sliding scale upward, depending on the house price. Okay, thank you so much for your questions. Oh, do you, do you, do you speak French? Uh, un peu. Un petit peu. Just, uh, un petit peu en français uh, <laughs> but pour le, le, le Radio Canada. Des, désolé, uh, je, je ne peux pas. Oh, oh, just okay. You, not, you don't have any. Okay, great. Sorry. Désolé. Désolé. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.